They're not supposed to laugh. Of course, I can't hear them. You muted them. Uh, I have not muted anybody. But, but, so today I want to talk to you about nothing. I know when you sent that over, I was like, what do you mean nothing? Yeah, you asked me, what's going on? I said nothing. And that Wednesday off to you? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Y'all like, what is he talking about? He's talking about nothing. Well, there's a huge word in the Bible that it's going to encourage us. And that, that has a double meaning. It's a great meaning, actually. And we're going to look into that. But before we do that, Joseph, would you uh, uh, break bread to us by leading us in prayer? And, um, and then if you have a pen or pencil, I want you to write down one through 10. I'm going to give you 10, 10 nothings today. Okay. So, uh, Joseph, would you go ahead and lead us in, in prayer? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, eternally heavenly father, father, God, thank you, Lord. You've allowed us brethren to join together in fellowship. We're able to meet like this personally through the means that you've provided through Zoom. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Father God, that you may open our understanding and give us humility that we may humble ourselves to hear the message that you speak to us today through Pastor Hyman. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that we may not lean on our, on our own understanding or even on our own wisdom, but on your wisdom. And we seek you diligently, Lord. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. These you may flowers from HEV are long lasting, huh? Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, pretty. Blooming. You got the demo. Yeah. Who, who's blooming? Who's, who's, who's saying it's pretty? Go ahead and yeah. mute, mute everybody if you don't mind. I am. Yeah, I can see you. It's hot. Go ahead and mute yourself, Pastor. Okay, you got me? Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Hey, guys, go ahead and uh, write down a piece of paper if you can, uh, 1 through 10. I'm going to give you 10 nothings that Romans 8, uh, 38 to 39 uh, gives us. I'm going to be reading to you from the New Living Translation. And, uh, you know, I, I want to I want to just say, first of all, before we start, I'm so humble because I am I am so blessed to be able to serve with, with all of you guys. I've had uh, some great conversations, great meetings with uh, – with our, our deacons and along with our uh, our finance team, uh, we made we had some, some good long meetings uh, about ministry in the direction of the church. And I, I pray and hope, uh, uh, if you can, uh, uh, make sure you look at that the document that was emailed to you. Uh, some of y'all are going to get it mailed if, if you don't have email, but go ahead and look at that. And uh, it's uh, it's basically the story. It's a timeline of uh, everything that's happening as far as in our in our area of our finances, so it'll be like this, and so you should get a document. I've got some hard copies. If you didn't get one, I can get get, get you one. So, um, I is think that it's good. the uh, four page that Debbie sent out through email? Yeah. Yes, okay. it is. Just making yeah. sure. Fantastic. So, uh, uh, just to keep you guys in the loop, uh, I like the word uh, that I think Brother Oscar has been using: transparency. Uh, my word is intentionality. Uh, nothing ever happens. Uh, on its own you have to you have to do something somebody's got to do you know do the leading or do the pushing uh do the encouragement do the challenging uh and i, I thank god uh that we have uh, these two groups we're fixing to get our nominating committee busy because we got to look at the new year for uh Sunday school teachers coming up and also 2021 leadership teams uh reason I'm telling you all this because uh, there's uh, a lot of things in life that can uh, detach us from doing what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, the very first thing is your responsibility is not at church. That's not your first calling. Your first calling, my first calling is our relationship with the Lord. Uh, the second responsibility is that we would be good stewards of our families. Uh, so those relationships that we would continue to refine them. Uh, build them, strengthen them, and then the, and then the third uh, uh, responsibility is, of course, it says to the church who Jesus died for, and and when you do all all three of those things, uh, you find yourself in a circle of love. You find your, your, yourself connected to God, and uh, which is the the most uh, aggressive, strongest love, the agape love. That is God's love uh, that He demonstrated His love towards us that He died for us. 
uh, in our condition. So let's go ahead and dive into this text of uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. And then we're going to back up and close with uh, another verse in Epithecus 35. The Bible says here, and this is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Romans. It says, and I am convinced that nothing, nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Verse 39 says, no power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing at all, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Apostle Paul here is, is saying that as children of God, as a child of God, that there is absolutely nothing, you catch that? Nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Absolutely nothing. And what this does is, is showing us our, our eternal security. So don't ever forget that. Underline that, that or write that down, that this passage is, 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 is literally a grounding and, and uh, affirming, okay, our eternal security in him. You see, because we believe that once saved, you're always saved. Now, there's, there's things in our lives that disconnect us. There's times in our lives when we draw away from God, but there is nothing that can separate us from God. And once you're saved, you're always saved. I'm going to let, let you know about that is this, is, is that salvation is not a feeling. Okay? If salvation was about how I feel, how I feel saved, then I would find myself very discouraged because there's times that I don't feel saved, okay? And, and what I mean by that is that, that that so many things come at us because we're so wretched, just like Paul said, you know, I'm, I'm the most wretched man, but it's only by the grace of God that sometimes we feel, we don't feel, we maybe we have an attitude, maybe we're angry, maybe we wrong something. We did some kind of sin and we don't feel like we even deserve it. Well, it's not even about deserving either. Salvation is not even about being deserved because it's not, it is salvation. It is a gift from God. It's not a feeling, but watch this. Salvation rather, salvation rather is what God did through his son, Jesus on the cross. So salvation is what was paid on the cross. And what was paid, it was the blood of Jesus. It was the blood, it was the precious blood of Jesus that paid for our sins. And because of that, we can claim that. We can claim that. So the very first thing I want you to see is that the very first nothing is this, that not even death, okay? Death. It says that death cannot separate us. Death will never be able to separate us. As a matter of fact, Jesus got the victory over death on the cross. That was done. For you see, the Bible says, absent from the bodies to be what? Present with the Lord. And that is when we will spend eternity with God himself in, in heaven. And, and that'll be where we're going to go. That's our final destination. That's where we're going. But it's not just about death. But watch this number two, life. Life cannot separate us either. Right now we are so separated from this COVID because of this COVID-19, this pandemic. Life has us uh, uh, in, a, in a shamble. Life has us kind of a little mixed up, a little messed up because it's not supposed to be like this. I think, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Gilbert and some others that, that has said that, that, that the fellowship is what we miss. I know that, that, that you, Joseph, you love fellowship. Uh, I know that, that I, you know, every bit I get today, Paul came to the office. Okay. And uh, once I see him, it just brings such joy in my life because it's that connection, it's that relationship we have, it's that friendship, you know, uh, that we have. When I see uh, my brothers and sisters, you know, uh, in Christ, you know, when I see my family, it's just a great thing because we were built, life was not meant to live separate, it was meant to live together. 
But here very clearly we find the scripture says it's not even life can separate us, even though we're, we're distant from each other, even though we have to uh, be distant from uh, 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 the relationships and the friendships and we can't do the things the way we used to. Life will not separate us. You see, we have life on earth, but we, all, we will also have life in heaven. Here's the third thing. Watch this. Angels. Angels cannot take us away from the love of God either. You know who, who was made above the angels? Can somebody tell me? Well, they're, they're, they're Paul was. Paul was made above the angels. That's right. We were. We're above the angels. You understand? You understand how angels are so cool, man. They're just so amazing. I just hear about stories, you know, the angel of the Lord. And, and one day when God, when God comes back and returns, and when that trumpet is blown, there's going to be a host of angels. Do you know that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he could have called 10,000 angels. And he could have wiped everybody off. He could have got off the cross. But no, he did that willingly. But not even angels can take us away from the love of God either. Because love, God loves us. He made us in a very special, unique way. Here's another thing. It's principalities. Principalities. That can be uh, rules or governments. Okay? Do you sometimes feel like the government is separating you from God? Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. But in our dollar bill and our currency, what do we have on there? We have in God, we trust. And I'm saying that we're so far away from that as a nation about trusting in God. So remember, principalities cannot take us away. They cannot separate us. That is the rules, the government, those in charge. Okay. The list goes on. That, though, that, you know, we don't, you know, we adhere to the God and say, but let me tell you something. We have one who we bow to, one who we serve. And that is God himself. So none of them can take us away from the love of God. No matter what they might lay down, no matter what might happen. And there's so many other governments, okay? Communist governments taking away the rights, uh, taking away, if you're caught reading the word of God, you are killed. There's, there's underground churches in many countries. And yet we, we have the opportunity to, to be here and be connected with God through worship and through church. Yes, we're disconnected right now because of the COVID-19. We can't come to the, the campus and worship together, but that doesn't mean that you're separated from God. So principalities, they cannot uh, take us away. Here's another thing is, is our present, our present, okay? The, 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 Paul uses our present circumstances. What you're going through right now cannot separate us either you know what there i think i believe that there's bigger issues than COVID 19. i believe that there's a bigger pandemic you might say well is it is it the swine pandemic they're talking about it might be coming no is it the flu no what is it is it a hurricane no absolutely no it's the pandemic of sin there's a bigger issue you know right now that there is no uh no uh, uh what do you call it no uh, medication right what was the word uh, antibiotics in, uh, for this uh, uh, COVID-19? Vaccine. There's no vaccine. Thank you. There's no vaccine. But let me tell you something. There's a vaccine for sin. And it is Jesus. It is Jesus. Don't ever forget that. There's a vaccine. There, there's, there's, a, there's a way out. And it is looking to Jesus and nothing else. So our present services, they cannot separate us either. That is because... He has promised that he would never what? He would never leave us and he would never forsake us. That's a promise from, from the Lord himself. He said that he will always, always be with us in our what? In our present time. What if the psalmist says that God, the Lord is my what? My help in a present time. You know, when I'm in trouble, he is present. He is there. Even in this time of pandemic, he is present. He's He's huge. This is why we need to understand Colossians that I'm sure that that even in the time of Paul that they were going through through situations, even uh, plagues and, and 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 moments where where you know they had something similar to that. This is nothing new. 
And, and he says in, to the Colossians, he says, set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth. Because if, if you set your affection on things of the earth, if you send your, your, your focus on things of earth, it'll, 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 it'll cripple you. Have you noticed? I know I have. When I watch uh, the news, okay? Oh, look at that. Look at Oh, I and mean, I love watching the news. Yeah, I know some of y'all never watch, don't watch news at all here on TV, and that's good, and that's great. But you know what I notice is that it gets pretty dis discouraging to hear all the stuff that's going on. But the reality is that no matter what, and all those things that happen are pressing circumstances, whatever it may be, and it may be something other than COVID-19, and God knows we have those things. They can't separate us from God. Here's another thing. Things to come. Who's counting? Which number am I on? You're on five. Come on. We're halfway there. Things to come. Are things going to come? They're going to try to separate us? Absolutely. There are things that are going to come. Things to come. Okay, write that down. Listen, the future, things to come, the things in the future, they will not be able to separate us from the love of God either. So that is encouragement. So when I read that and I understand what Paul is telling us is that even the things to come cannot separate us. I don't care what it is. You put it in that blank, it will not separate us. It cannot because God holds the future. He's got the whole world in his hands. You remember I was almost saying it. He's got the whole world in his hands. That's right. He's got everything in his hands. Sometimes I sign my letters by this. I sign and I put in his grip to remind me that I'm in his grip to remind the reader that he or her or she is in the grip of God. You see, he has already won the battle and mark this down. Nothing, absolutely nothing can change that. No matter, let's go to number six, no matter how powerful, right? The word powerful, no matter how powerful someone actually or number something seven. Sorry, man. Was that? You're at number seven, sorry. Okay, number seven. No matter how powerful or no matter how, uh, uh, how something is powerful or someone is powerful, that person or that thing cannot separate us from the love of God. And that's very important because sometimes we feel uh, that, 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 that people in power control us. Sometimes we feel that our circumstances, that it's a very powerful thing, is a very a serious issue and it's just you feel overwhelmed you feel powerless but i'm here to tell you to look to jesus look to god look to his scriptures be reminded that no matter how powerful someone or something is it will not and it cannot separate you from the love of god not because me i uh, is, is vocalizing it not because a preacher said it or somebody wrote it or somebody told you about a book that wrote that no it is because it is god's written word that nothing can separate you from the love of God because God is more powerful. He is omnipotent. He is the all-powerful, all-powerful. So look at number eight. Here we go. Heights. The word heights. It says in Scripture that heights, in other words, nothing from above can separate us from the love of God, okay? Or, excuse me, watch this, uh, Anything from depths, number nine, anything from depths. So anything from the heights or anything from depths or below can never separate us either. Nothing. You know, he pretty much covers like everything. It's like, well, you might as well just said nothing. Well, that's, isn't that what I told you? It's, there's nothing. Nothing can separate us. He's, he's clearing everything up. Angels, everything, nobody, principalities, nothing. Our circumstances, nothing, nothing, heights, depths, nothing can ever separate us. But he leaves us with number 10. And this is very important because this is where we have to really, really focus on. No created being. No created being, number 10, or creature or animal or et cetera, can never separate us from the love of God. That includes the enemy himself. Amen? No created being. No creative being. That, that includes anything. That includes your enemy. Or that includes maybe you feel like you're being separated. Sometimes your your boss or, or, or an individual. But there is no creative being 
or creature or animal or there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Ten nothing. See, Paul made this huge list for us to assure us that nothing can separate us from God. Let me remind you that as, as a child of God, we have security. We have security with him. That is God the Father. We have this relationship. And the scripture tells us that his love endures forever. Our love is the one that does not endure forever. Our love is the one that is made on condition. Uh, well, if you do this, I'll love you that, and so on. But our love, okay, is not like God's love. God has the most perfect love. And because of that, as a child of God, that you are secure with him and his love endures forever. God is not also uh, the one that goes away, by the way. He's not the one that goes away. We're the one that tends uh, tend to uh, go away from God. We're the one that, that find ourselves running from God, from God. If you look at your situation, your relationship with God, that is exactly what has happened when you find yourself away from God. We're the ones that run from him. But take heart because thank you, Jesus, that he's the great shepherd. Amen. He's a great shepherd. And what does a good shepherd always do? He goes after the stray sheep. That's what a good shepherd does. He goes after the stray sheep. Because why? He cares. He cares because he wants to, he wants to remind that sheep that, you know what? Not even you running away from me can ever separate you from my love. Um, in closing, a wife might say that, uh, state of her, of her disease that a husband that nothing will ever separate me from my, my from my love to him okay I'm a wife who has her husband that's diseased might say nothing will ever separate me from his love or or, or she might even say that or, or may might mean that that the memory of his love the memory of his love will be sweet and powerful okay uh, all her life but that's not what paul meant here that's not what paul was talking about because then if you back up to verse 35 excuse me go to 34 back up to verse 34 we haven't read that just go to this is a bonus in in, in, in verse 34 of Romans chapter 8 it says who will then who will uh then uh let me see i'm waiting back oh yeah who then will condemn us no one for watch this for christ died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is what? He is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand and he's pleading for us. He is our intercessor. He's our uh, uh, man. Jesus, our attorney. He's our go between. You see, Christ, Jesus, is the one who died. He's the one who died. And, and more than that, watch this not only died, but he was the one who was raised from the dead. And who is at the right hand of God? Who, who's there interceding for us? It is Jesus Christ himself. He is there. So the reason Paul can say that nothing will ever separate us from the love of Christ is because Christ is alive. And Christ is still loving us now. He's still showing us his love. And he shows us his love through various things. He shows us his love through creation. He shows us his love through humanity. He shows us his love through the church. The church. It's the most precious thing where the love of Christ can be unveiled through his pride. You see, he's at the right hand of God. And therefore, he is there ruling, watch this, ruling for us. He's there to intercede for us. He is your champion. He is your warrior. He would do everything he can personally to make sure that you know that you are loved by him. And we need to hear those words because we live and we're living in very... Uh, difficult times and we need to hear that we're loved so many times um, in a relationship with a husband and wife there's not that love you, you there there's just not that there's there's jesus the presence of god is not in there because they're they're lost but when we take uh, the love of god through the scriptures and when someone gets saved they're radically changed and it's so it's so radically changed that it, it infects that home uh, I love that, that, that Paul reminds us that it's not only we that we would be safe, but also that our household will be safe. I truly, truly believe that. 
I truly believe as someone, uh, whether it's a teenager or a child or a wife or a husband or a nephew, somebody in that home would totally radically turn his life towards Jesus and, and put his eyes on Jesus and totally change his life because not of what he has done, but what God has done for him. I truly believe that that person can be made a, a huge impact. And that, that, that people will begin to even change because they'll see a life change. Not a person that goes to church. Not a person that, that can quote a scripture. Anybody can quote scripture. Anybody can go to church. But when there is life change, people take notice of that. And they want that. They want whatever is changed. And then when that person is changed, it's because he realizes that his anchor is in the love of God. And that nothing can ever separate him or her from God. And our children need to hear that. They need to know that parents make sure you engrave that. My mom engraved that to me as a as a as a child. And she said, Ain't nothing, nothing can happen to you without the permission of God. There's and the love of God will always be with you. Keep loving people. Man, God bless you. I appreciate it. I hope you guys were encouraged today. Go ahead and unmute us. I want to hear everybody. Uh, I hope it was uh, encouraging to you today. Hey Frank, uh, I, I I appreciate all of you guys and and uh, uh, I'm gonna put on my glass so I can see who's on board, man. Uh, but uh, but Anna, you, you you keep you keep serving Christ, and and Marsha, you you keep staying faithful there, and you know you gotta you gotta we gotta hang in there with Lorenzo, man. He's a good guy. But uh, but just hang in there, and uh, and Joseph, you you keep serving Gilbert and Alma, and, and it's my wife only. Yeah, she's on board. Aaron Pack, Janelli, come on, man, all you guys. Uh, and then there's phoneless. Who in the world is phoneless? Can somebody disclose who is phoneless? The phone, iPhone S. That is uh, Oscar and Sylvia. Oh, I can't read it. iPhone S. I thought it said phoneless. I'm phoneless. Is your greatness, okay. your, your faithfulness, iPhone oh, Same thing. That's great, man. Well, hey, brother Oscar, and all of you guys. The pantry is full again. We have a lot of fresh. We have a lot of fresh bread, Sylvia. Uh, okay. Cassandra came in this morning and made some bags to go bags ready to go. We have bread. We have spaghetti. We have spaghetti sauce.